Welcome to the rinks at Shelton, Connecticut. You're watching live on the LI Sports Network, where the Empire Conference Black Division, excuse me, yes, the Black Division Conference Championship is on the line, where the Farmingdale State Rams are set to take on the University of New Haven Chargers. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jordan DeLuciano. I'll be on the call for this afternoon action where Farmingdale State, the current number one seed in the Empire Conference Black Division, going up, up against the number two seed in the Empire Conference Black Division. I'm specifically naming the Black Division because later on today, you can catch the Purple Division, the Division Two Conference Finals on the LI Sports Network where Fairfield goes up against Ramapo, but we will cross that bridge when we get to it because right now, as you see, New Haven Chargers decked in their solid blacks, trimmed in blue and yellow. They'll be opposed by Farmingdale State in their solid whites, trimmed in green. Farmingdale comes into this game after knocking off Hofstra last night in the semifinals, 4-1. to one. And then on the other end of things, a shutout, a 4 nothing convincing win for the Chargers. New Haven knocking off Sacred Heart University last night. And that's where we stand with both these teams trying to win the first ever Empire Conference Black Division Championship. So these two teams got about eight minutes and change left in their warm-ups. They're going to go right after warm-ups into first period puck drop. So no ice cut, no brief after the uh, warm-up, and we're going right into it. So just under eight minutes now left in the warm-up. I will step aside, but when I return, it will be puck drop. The Empire Conference Black Division title is on the line. Farmingdale State College and the University of New Haven going at it. First period puck drop coming up.
Welcome back, everyone, to the rinks at Shelton, Connecticut. You're watching live on the LI Sports Welcome Network. And warm-ups are done. Only things we got to get through are starting lineups, national anthem, and then it'll be puck drop between University of New Haven Chargers and the Farmingdale State College Rams. Peter Ricciatelli led the team in goals and points. 16 goals on the year, 26 points on the year. He's their go-to guy. He's one of the two captains on this Chargers team. And they'll be backed up by Alexander Fernandez, the Empire Conference Black Division goaltender of the year. He started in all 18 games for the Chargers this year. there James Jensen led this team in points with 23 as well as led this Farmingdale State team in penalty minutes as well Nick Benchurix on the back end for Farmingdale had a brief stint with the Division II team that was knocked off yesterday in the first round in the Purple Division as they lost 5-2 to Ramapo and Brandon Whalen will be in back-to-back -back games for the Rams. He started in yesterday's game when they knocked off Hofstra. And he'll get the championship game today. Starting lineups done, national anthem done. Last thing we have to do is puck drop where the Empire Conference Black Division Championship is on the line. University of New Haven will start the Chargers. They come into this game, regular season record 10-6-1. They sit ninth in the American Division within the CHF, so they're the ninth best team. They're currently the number two seed within the Empire Conference. And on Farmingdale's end, they ended the season, regular season record, that is 13 and 8. They are fourth in the CHF American Division Conference, and they are the number one seed within the Empire. The CHF, you have the American Division, which is like the Division Three right now, which we're about to watch a championship game. Then you have the National Division, which is the Division Two teams, such as what we'll see later today, Farmingdale and Ramapo, as we're underway. As a man goes down in McGarry, but it looked like he toe-picked it there. So we'll move on through. Richatelli goes off the glass, and he'll go right past the lunging stick of William Dixon, one of the two Dixons for Farmingdale, alongside brother on the forward group, number 16, Brendan Dixon. 
hit right at the top of the circle, kept in by Ricciatelli at the blue line. As that one's thrown, knocked down in the high slot. And it'll be fished away by Dixon and out into neutral zone ice. These two teams met three times throughout the regular season. And it wound up going in the favor of New Haven. New Haven was 2-1 and one on the year against Farmingdale. But speaking of it, the Rams in on goal goes off the side of the cage. Back to the point. Dixon throws it on goal off a leg. And going to chase will be McGarry. McGarry will leave it behind the net. Signoretti gets it to the point. Dixon fires one back to the net. McGarry trying to get it in his feet. But it'll be scooped up to, out of harm's way by Mascari. And he'll find Richitelli. Richitelli trying to dance around, and he does. Makes another move, still reaching for it, firing, and a stop by Whalen. And maybe a little bit extra, but no harm, no foul. As Whalen makes this first stop of the game, and Richitelli showing why he leads this team in both points and goals with two nice moves and a shot on goal there, stopped by Whalen. It'll be Brandon Whalen in net for Farmingdale. In 14 games this year, he had a 3.05 goals against average and a 9.05 save percentage. But as for my point before, New Haven took the season series against Farmingdale 2-1. to one. All the games went to overtime. It was a 3-2 win and a 2-1 win in overtime for the Chargers, and the Rams got their lone win in a 5-4 overtime game as Waylon gets the glove on it. Farmdale's overtime win was helped out by the winner, Matthew Heisen. And on the other end of things, who else? But Peter Ricciatelli got both overtime goals in their two wins against Farmingdale this year. Neutral zone ice played with the backhand by Bush. Couldn't get it much further, but it'll be helped out now back in neutral zone ice by Pilato. Pilato. Cuts in the middle, holds forehand, fires, and it blocked down. Pilato had a goal yesterday in their 4 nothing shutout win over Sacred Heart. It'll be Mar Marullo trying to scoop it into the slot. Nobody home except the defending Gabriel Patterson. And he'll go cross ice and back the other way will be Dowsett. Dowsett knocks down the high slot. Trying to cut there again. It's a couple times now that New Haven has tried to push that puck to the high slot. First one on it is New Haven in the corner. It'll be Tristan Deneau. But can't do much of that on the near side boards. It'll go around now. Farmingdale will bank it right in front of their own bench and back the other way as he's surrounded by two black jerseys. Trying to get a stick in there is the New Haven defense. Going down to a knee trying to play it was Heisen. And he'll go back behind Whalen. Near side boards come the Rams, but offsides is the call as Colin Cross was just a hair ahead of the play. So the faceoff will come just outside the New Haven zone. Farmingdale ended their season, their regular season that is, winning four of five games in which they were averaging 6.86 goals per game and only giving up 1.8 against. As Fernandez will get the glove down on that one. Fernandez appeared in all 18 games for the Chargers this year. A 3.58 goals against average and a 9.18 save percentage. And I mentioned in the beginning of the broadcast, he is the goaltender of the year within the Empire Conference Black Division. That Cree will go around the boards right in front of us here. They'll come right back out the center and right behind Fernandez. That one rims around the boards and Farmingdale has to touch up. McGarry reaches for it, gets it. McGarry cuts to the high slot, made a body. And a big hit, down goes Richitelli trying to keep his helmet on as getting all of that was James Jensen. As the 6-2 Jensen Really put the height difference on display there. As McGarry walks in, McGarry firing, and a pant save by Fernandez. Kicks out to the point, back towards the net, trickled behind. 
to the point again. Back towards the net, off the stick of Fernandez, pops in the air and goes far side McGarry. To the point, big battle going on in front of the net right now as the glove was stuck on the skate of Jensen. Yeah, Alexander Fernandez's glove got stuck. As we take a look at this hit by Jensen on Ricciatelli. Right in the corner, arms down, shoulder on shoulder, clean as can be. Yeah, so Fernandez's glove got caught on the bottom of Jensen's skate at the end of that play, and the glove wound up coming off, so that was the reason why the whistle was blown. Over the stick will be Donald Romano for Farmingdale to go chase. Got a man all over him. And Deneau. But Romano helped out by his D partner. Back the other way comes Farmingdale State. Romano now helping out on the forward end of things. Trying to push it forward. Runs up hitting a stick and going into the New Haven bench. Both these teams, this is kind of a, a preview, a taste of what it's going to be like at the AAU National Championship coming up in just a couple of weeks in Philadelphia in the middle of March when you're going to have a tournament style one game after another as they score. Farmingdale strikes first on the rebound. It's Kevin Manzi and on a one nothing lead. Farmingdale has been the better team at the start of this game as Manzi had six goals during the regular season. He picks up his first of the playoffs as Farmingdale strikes early. Farmingdale, better play and the more aggressive team so far as the boards rattle once again in the neutral zone. Farmingdale looking to push it back the other way again. Offensive zone ice, sticked away by Fernandez. And another stick saved by Hernandez, this time going to the near side boards as Heisen's still on it. Trying to keep it in, and he does. Heisen helped out by Cross. Cross will walk off the wall, leave it to a defenseman. Thrown towards the net, off a stick, bouncing free, still loose in the crease. They jam away at it, no whistle, and Fernandez able to clamp down. as Dixon's shot just took the stick right out of the hands of James Brady, and then chaos ensued in front of the crease, and this is a very ideal start for Farmingdale State right now. Manzi at the dot, lost that one. Manzi, though, is a recent goal scorer. As Farmingdale is throwing the body today, as there is Marco Melandrucolo. That's going to be a mouthful today to say Melandrucolo, but he was the one that rattled the glass there. So three impactful hits within the first six minutes here for the Rams. Around the boards, be D'Alessandro. D'Alessandro, he'll park it behind the net, poked off his stick. He's trying to regroup, and he does. D'Alessandro in front into the skates of Manzi. Manzi gets right back on it, throws it for deflected, and fanning on a wide open net was D'Alessandro. D'Alessandro had a yawning cage, just could not get stick on puck. But it's all Farmingdale right now. D'Alessandro from behind, in front, trying to find a man going to the net. Now Farmingdale able to get an offensive zone change here. The physicality is showing often as New Haven, second time in a row, could not exit the zone because the bodies are being thrown and they're only being thrown by one team right now, and that's Farmingdale State, as let's see, D'Alessandro right there as it just went under his blade. But this is the preview they're gonna get at the AAU National Championship coming up in Philadelphia in March is one game after another, not a long rest period. You're gonna get three games in a row. Right now it's two games in a row to win the conference championship, but three games in a row, you're gonna be tired, you're gonna be sore going to the next one, but you gotta suck it up and get through it. And right now it looks like Farmingdale is the fresher of the two teams. Nice move in on goal, and he scores! Luciano Signoretti with one for the highlight reel, and Farmingdale's up 2-0.
as New Haven there, and it looks like they're stuck in quicksand right now. As these are two teams that I mentioned before, they met three times in the regular season, all went to overtime, and two of them were won by New Haven. I think we're having offsides here. Yep, offsides will be the call. Luciano Signoretti, the freshman out of Smithtown, New York. So Signoretti and Manzi with the first two strikes of the game. And yesterday, Farmingdale had three different goal scorers on the four goals, and they have two completely new ones today in Signoretti and Manzi. As yesterday, Jensen, McGarry, and Heinsen. Heinsen had two yesterday, so those were the three goal scorers. As Pass out in front, off a skate, rebound shot goes behind. That was Deneau that picked up the loose change. Now from behind is Deneau again, trying to backhand one in front. But now going to pick it up is Richitelli in the corner. Long flip goes all the way into the ceiling. So faceoff will come right back into Farmingdale ice. So a good push here by New Haven after the second goal by Farmingdale, but it comes all the way down. Do we have an icing here? Yes, we do. So after it was D'Alessandro, Nicholas D'Alessandro, that fanned on that wide open net, and but it wound up being Michael D'Alessandro getting the assist on Luciano Signoretti's goal. Marco does have an assist. Marco D'Alessandro, that is, has an assist on the first goal by Kevin Manzi. Off the boards, push in opposite direction. Farmingdale shot goes wide of the blocker. That was Brendan Dixon. Go around the boards. Jensen back there to get it. It'll be poked free by the stick of Dowsett. Right back behind the New Haven net it goes. Back towards Jensen now. Jensen towards the net. A little bit too behind, but that rims around the boards for Donald Romano. McGarry meets it on the far side. McGarry, he'll leave it off. Throw it on goal. Eaten up. Rebound still loose. Fernandez clamps down. And you, you, you see the score is 2 nothing. The shot total is 12-2. As Farmingdale off to a very good start as we approach the halfway part of this opening frame. Signa already winning the draw cleanly towards the net, knocked down, pinballing, and they score! Luciano Signoretti finds the back of the net again, and it's a 3-0 Farmingdale State lead. And you want to have a, a, a perfect play to watch over for film. Signoretti wins the draw, goes to the net, gets a rebound and puts it in. That's everything you want to do as a center. Win the draw, go to the net, and look for a bouncing rebound. And these are some little things that you could take into account here. Farmingdale played their game against Hofstra first yesterday. They had the earlier game yesterday. It was New Haven. That was one of the last teams to take the ice last night where they knocked off Sacred Heart. So Farmingdale had a little bit extra time to recover opposed to New Haven. 
who won late last night, went to the hotel and had to get right back here around 12 o'clock for pregame. So a relatively quick turnaround for New Haven, and you can see that they're kind of coming out pretty slow right now. Face off one again by Farmingdale, doing a very good job of controlling the dots. Marullo throws it in front, nobody home as he had Riberick going behind. Drop to a man, firing and finding the glass was Ricciatelli. But a nice bounce for the Rams, good step there by Patterson to break up a potential odd man rush. As the game trucks on through, you, you tend to get your legs more as the game goes on, but if that's gonna be the case for New Haven, you don't wanna dig yourself a deep enough hole, and right now the hole is kinda of sinking. Down three nothing as we're just about at 10 minutes left in the period, and first on that puck is Riberick. Riberick means a hit behind the play, but Farmino keeps it in, finds a man in the high slot, goes underneath the stick, but it'll be picked up by Dixon on goal, pinballs around, and goes wide. Lunging for it and getting it is Pilato, and that one's eaten up by Whalen. Michael Pilato showing some good speed there to break behind the Farmingdale defense. As he had a goal in yesterday's 4-0 win over Sacred Heart. Nice move by Dixon to get out of his own zone there, but nobody home on the cross ice pass, and it'll be an icing against Farmingdale. Signoretti's second goal of the game. The assists are going to Ian Riberick and Nick Bentrowicz on the third goal of the game. Dixon, Dixon battling down low with Deneau. And he'll come up the near side board, trying to chip around him, and he does. It's Farmingdale, what a step, breaking it on goal, and they score, but it's going to be an interference against Farmingdale. So Nicholas D'Alessandro has the goal, but there you see that stick lift by Malin Drucolo was an interference. So the goal gets wiped off the board due to a much unnecessary interference penalty taken by Marco Malandrucolo. And you want to talk about starting to get that nail in the coffin? A 4 nothing lead a little bit over halfway through the first could have been a, a really daunting task for New Haven, but now they get a second Win, they get new life here because of that interference call. So let's see if New Haven can take advantage of it. This will be a huge momentum switch if the Chargers can convert here. Pushing off is Deneau. He'll come around the net, near side boards. Deneau. He'll switch off Ricciatelli. It'll be his puck, high slot, firing. Six save, rebound Ricciatelli, and getting that is Whalen as well. Now I think we're going to get, we're getting a penalty here. I think it's going to be against Farmingdale again. Yep, it's going to be a cross check against Donald Romano. So just as it seemed like Farmingdale was going to really open things up with a 4-0 lead, it's 3-0 and a 5-on-3 power play for New Haven as Richitelli shot. We see the replay here. Block on the side by Wayland. So when it was looking doom and gloom for the Chargers, there is some side of hope here. As a shot's blocked down, five on three, a lot of opportunity here for the Chargers. That one goes wide. 
Farmingdale trying to push it down the far side boards with Richitelli, first one on it. Richitelli, high slot, right behind a man, but keeping it in for now. It'll be Mascari. He'll slow it down, Richitelli plays catch with Mascari. Mascari fires, stick save, rebound kicks out, Richitelli gets it in the skates, comes right back out, high slot. It'll be Pilato. Pilato tries to throw it in front, Jamming away out of it, and it's a clog jam on the side of the net, but nonetheless, puck comes all the way down. New Haven has 38 seconds left on the five on four. As a big collision, right in front of the New Haven blue line will be a penalty, a hooking call against Michael Pilato. And that's not what you want to see on a five on three, is taking a penalty. Yep, that is clear as could be right in front of the referee, and another unnecessary penalty because he had two guys near him. So if he doesn't get that puck, it's all right because you add two guys to help you out. This New Haven team yesterday had 12 penalties in their 4-0 win against Sacred Heart. Eight of them came in the third period. So that side of undiscipline was on showcase yesterday and picked a bad time to show up today with an undisciplined. So in 15 seconds, we will go to four on four. As Deneau will take his time, he'll leave it at the blue line. Three seconds and two, Richitelli's shots gloved away, and now it will be four on four. So it'll be four and four for 34 seconds. And then Farmingdale State, after all the damage they did to themselves in terms of getting in the penalty box, after this 34 seconds, they will be on a very short power play. At the dot, pushed back by the Rams. They'll go around far side board trying to get it as Marullo. But they'll leave it for the Farmingdale defense. Cross blue line, firing, block it away. Rebound still loose, back on goal, and gloved away by Fernandez, but Puck's still bouncing around. That was Saccone that went end-to-end -end on the defensive unit, but now pushing back the other way is Deneau. Five seconds and now four left on the five on four, on the four on four, should I say. As that one's bounced off the board, trickles towards Wayland, so it'll be now a 45-second power play as I speak for Farmingdale. So they dodge a bullet there with back-to-back penalties, and one of them wind up taking the fourth goal off the board. It'll be Dixon up ice. Finds man on the near side. Dropping off right in front of us on the boards. On goal, in front, deflected, right into the glass, but a weird bounce there. As that one's thrown to the point, knocked down, firing, deflected off a body. That was Brendan Dixon. Now with 10 seconds left in the power play. Big body on the board, trying to clamp it down as Betrowicz, but it's punched out, and that will virtually do it for the Farmingdale power play. So after a couple guys going in and out of the box, we'll get back to even five on five. It'll be Donald Pace for Farmingdale trying to poke it free on the boards. Poked free, dangerous area, but a good quick stick there by Mascari to keep that away from his goaltender. Betrowicz pinching in from the point aggressively, able to keep it in for now. And again, New Haven struggling to come out of their zone this first period, is that which they kind of just have to resort to, is just flipping it out to center as long as it gets out of their zone, they'll take it. Pace will steer it around the boards as the other four Rams go for a change. But again, New Haven, not very sound in their own end right now. As William Dixon affects, but finds Pace in front trying to stuff it, and it goes wide. Pace will have to go chase it. He's been out there for a long shift, but he's still trucking through. In front, nobody home. That one hit a body on the bench, on the New Haven bench. So, Puck will go right back into New Haven ice. Well, 
like to say hello to all of you guys watching on the LI Sportsnet, whether you be back on the island or in Connecticut, part of the University of New Haven fan base. Thanks for joining us on this afternoon. Be sure to stay tuned for the Empire Conference Purple Division Championship as that shot's deflected off the side of the net. But yes, the Empire Conference Purple Division uh, Championship game, the Division II Championship game, between Ramapo College and Fairfield University. But it's Farmingdale back in the offensive zone, powering their way to the net. Puck still loose, jamming away at it, sprawling as Fernandez. Puck pokes free and goes off the side of the cage. Back in front, Farmingdale pass on across the crease, and it kicked off a skate. No stick for Fernandez right now as they go to scramble for it, but you gotta pay attention to the puck, opposed to giving your goaltender a stick there, as Matthew Bush tried to give Fernandez a stick while the puck was coming at him. In that situation, you're just better off as a defenseman, not going to get Fernandez a stick, but just give him your stick. It'll be Brady throwing it in front, nobody home. Man goes down in front, and Aiden douse it. But no harm, no foul. We play on through. 3.20 left in the opening frame. It'll be McGarry. McGarry leaves it. Looking on goal, firing. Nice save by Fernandez. McGarry takes a man down behind the play, but we play on through. There is a New Haven player down in Pilato. Crowd is not happy because McGarry took down Pilato right in front of an official, but no penalty coming. So let's see if we can see behind the way. So there's McGarry. He drops it off, meets a hit. So that was a low hit, first of all. Took out the legs. Let's see McGarry here. A little bit of a shove up, up high. Yeah, it was a shove up high. In all fairness, uh, Pilato should have got a penalty for sweeping the leg on the first hit. McGarry should have got a penalty for hitting him up high. But also Pilato could have got embellishment. That's just my two cents. So I see three potential penalties there. And the refs will talk about this one. No one in the box right now. No discipline on the board right now. But Pilato was able to get off on his own power and skate to the bench, so he's all good. That's, so that's a good sign there. Still trying to sort things out. But McGarry, he, his first game of the, uh, he came back to Farmingdale. He was not part of them, the team for the first half of the season. But McGarry, his first game was the beginning of that four wins and five games run that I was talking about to end the season, in which he had those five games. He had a goal, three assists, and four points. And he also contributed with a goal in yesterday's win against Hofstra. So they right now have McGarry for five minutes. That's kind of odd considering they, they didn't call a penalty during the fray and when McGarry committed the infraction, there was no penalty called. That's a low bridge hit. So we have it on our, I don't know. No. Yeah, this is, oh, I'm watching on our monitor right now as you guys are watching what's just, everyone's talking about it. I can see on our monitor right now. Can we show the replay again, you think? Yeah. So we're gonna get the replay again here. See what happened. So here's the first infraction I was talking about. That's a low bridge hit on Pilato. So that should have been a penalty there. That's a low hit. Here's the penalty on McGarry, which didn't get called. That should have been called. And I kind of take back my embellishment there because that was a little bit higher and more of a lunging hit than I first thought. So Pilato, I think, should, could have got a low bridge, a, uh, a low hit there for a penalty. McGarry should have got one on the spot for that, but it took them some conversation, and McGarry will have a five-minute, I'm thinking major penalty, because I know, it's just a five-minute miss, uh, not a major, he's not ejected. So McGarry will sit for five. He will be able to return, no game ejection. 
But just like before with a five on four and a five on three, the door is back open for New Haven to try to cut this lead down. Because this five minute power play, it's not like your typical two minute man advantage. This five minute clock will continue to run until the five minute clock ends. So New Haven can score as many goals as they want. Richitelli will fire one off the glove of Waylon and around the boards will be Deneau. Deneau tries to go to the point and he does. It's Richitelli again firing. And that's back to back times. He's just gonna let it go because they know it's not like you're down one, you could be a little bit more methodical. You're, you're down three here, coming to the closing moments of the first. You gotta get as many pucks to the net as you can. Richitelli coughs it up to pace at the blue line as Mascari will wait behind his own net. Deneau will cross center. Deneau will peel off, goes to the high slot. Mascari pinballs off some skates, bounces free, and it kicks into the far side corner. Trying to flip it out was Romano as that puck just hemmed in on the boards. Two minutes left in the period, 3.51 left on the five minute penalty. As a long flip goes back into the ceiling, just like before, so the face off will stay in Farmingdale ice. Richitelli, his last eight games, including playoffs, so today, uh, yesterday's game as well, eight goals and seven assists. As there he is, Richitelli firing again, almost got a friendly bounce off the glove of Dixon. As Fernandez has some contact there with Riberick in front of the net, but nice play right in front of his own blue line by Romano. As New Haven's got to try it again, a little bit of aggressive push here by Farmingdale shorthanded. As flying in the zone was Malandrucolo. Oh, stretch pass, able to find him in. Three minutes left of the power play. Shot fired off the blocker. Big collision at the top of the slot. No penalty coming as that puck comes all the way down. It'll be Patterson. Dances by one. Got 50 left in the period. Patterson still going, but upended right in front of the Ram bench. A couple bodies going down and a penalty coming up against New Haven. Looks like it was a trip again right in front of the Rams bench. And for the second time this period, New Haven will negate their power play with the penalty of their own. Tristan Deneau, the ill-advised trip with 44.4 left in the period and 2.36 left on their power play, which is now pretty much cut short. So four on four we go. Bush will move it up ice to who else but Richitelli. He's played the poke of the uh, time this period as he coughs it up at Farmingdale territory and back the other way come the Rams. That'll be Marullo. 27 left in the period, leaves at the point, puck comes right back towards him. Now to go to pick it up will be Romano. He'll send it right back around the boards again. And it'll be Bush for the Chargers. Up ice just out of the reach of Brady. Could possibly have a two on one if they could have linked up there. Nine point six left in the opening frame. Score holds right now unless New Haven can get a last second strike here. It is a period for New Haven to throw away the tape, never look at the footage again. And Farmingdale uh, of a dream start to the championship game. Two seconds and one, and that will do it for the opening frame as Farmingdale with a convincing start to the Empire Conference Black Division championship game.
So after one, it's Farmingdale three, New Haven nothing. Could have been four, but if that breakaway goal got negated due to the hooking call midway through the second. But again, after one, we'll skate off. It'll still be four and four when we return, as New Haven still has a minute and 16 left on their penalty clock. And Farmingdale still has a minute and 52 left on there. So you're watching live on the LI Sports Network. Farmingdale up 3-0 in the championship game at the end of one. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everyone, to the rinks at Shelton, Connecticut. You're watching live on the LI Sports Network. My name is Jordan DeLuciano, and we're just moments away from second period puck drop in this Empire Conference Black Division Conference Championship game. Farmingdale State up 3-0 over the University of New Haven Chargers. It started off with a goal by Kevin Manzi, and then back-to-back -back strikes by Luciano Signoretti. And that's where we stand right now, a dominated period by Farmingdale State. New Haven had a couple chances on the power play, but immediately twice negated their own power plays. As right now, we're gonna start four and four because James McGarry for Farmingdale still has a minute and 52 left on his five minute penalty that he took, that cross check that landed a little bit up high. And there's a big body right off the rip here by Gabriel Patterson for New Haven. And that was something that was against New Haven in the first period was the body checking. It was all Farmingdale. They were the aggressive. They were the more physical team. They were the faster team. And that's why they had all three strikes in the first. Could have had four, but a breakaway goal was negated due to interference. But New Haven, a good start here and a fast start right now as Patterson will pick it up. But then a penalty right as Patterson took the shot as Michael D'Alessandro for Farmingdale was hit up high by Aiden Dowson. And D'Alessandro is down right now. You fucking suck! Hey. D'Alessandro skating off on his own right now. As you see him cross the neutral zone ice. He's all good to go, but Dow set through a high hit right as he released the pass. So let's see if this is going to be more than two minutes. Because this could be similar to what McGarry got. And I think this is going to be a little bit more than what McGarry got. Because now Dowsett is now ejected from the game. Aiden Dowsett's night is done. Unlike McGarry, he still has a minute and 17. But it happened just off camera, so could not get it to you, but it was a high hit to the head, reaching forward with the arms, and then D'Alessandro down due to injury. Kind of was the final nail in the coffin. So in the championship game, Aiden Dowsett, the forward at a Hopog, New York, so in terms of Long Island, where the Farmingdale State College is located, local boy, but just like yesterday, the, the late penalties in the third period, eight total third period pen penalties by New Haven in their win against Sacred Heart. It's carried in today, and it's just been one bullet into their own foot after another. As now Farmingdale will be on a four on three power play, shot on goal, kicked away by Fernandez. Dixon will get it back. Trying to go through his own legs, trying to play it. Puck still free. Could have been poked to neutral zone ice, but kept in by Dixon. He'll play it again. Across. Bentrowicz. Eh, not yet. Now it's Bentrowicz at center point. He'll hold the line. Fans on the shot as the puck just trickled away from him. Cross ice. Dixon again fires. Pad save. Rebound is swallowed up by Fernandez. So a three goal deficit to overcome. Now they're one man short in New Haven. They had a five on four, which turned into a five on three. And then the Chargers took a penalty, which then evened up at four on four. And now they started their five minute power play at the end of the first period, took a tripping penalty to turn it four on four and then take a game misconduct to now go down four on three here. These two teams seen each other plenty full throughout the season. And kind of all those frustration from those three games is coming out right now. And the frustration of being for New Haven, that is, the frustration of being down three nothing here is definitely showing as Bentrowix. Noah pass, throws it in front, stuck in the skates of Brendan Dixon. Dixon, he comes out with it. He's got his brother out there with him. Nice move. Another one by Dixon to get free. Pucks kicks loose. 
It'll be Signoretti going behind the net. Signoretti, nice move. He is on hat trick watch. Cuts in front, pass in front. One timing shot is knocked away by Fernandez. That was William Dixon on the look, but now Farmingdale will start a five on four power play for three and a half continuous minutes. Nice move by Signoretti, and he scores! Luciano Signoretti, the power play, hat trick goal, and Farmingdale is up 4 0. And the wheels are, if they haven't started to come off, they're rolling away right now for New Haven. As, as I mentioned, five minute power plays, that clock will continuously run regardless of how many power play goals are scored. So with 3.26 left on the penalty clock, that 3.26 will just keep rolling until it hits zeros. Be Farmingdale right back on it. On the near side corner, trying to go behind the net. As that one's thrown all the way down, Wayland will have to play it on the bounce. Luciano Signoretti played his high school hockey for Smithtown Hop Hog, where he is from in Smithtown, New York. As we go underneath the stick there of Colin Cross, gets it right back in front, trying to find a man in Donald Pace going to the net. Two and a half left on the major penalty. Walking out, cycling down low to Romano. It'll be Pace now, behind Fernandez. Goes to the boards, gets it right back from Cross. Romano now. Pace, Cross, fires, pad save. And it goes far side corner, trying to scoop it up now will be Deneau. But hounded by a couple white jerseys, coughs it up. And right back on it goes Farmingdale. Pace, nice spin move to get off the boards. Trying to go in front, hounded now by Patterson. And now Cross, Patterson still working it down low, doing everything he can. As that is a stick caught in the boards right now. We have three sticks down on the ice. Nice move by Deneau. Couldn't get the puck on the second, but now a breakaway. Ricciatelli all alone, and a stop by Wayland. A crucial stop by Brandon Whalen. Has not seen much activity yet, but that's a crucial save to keep New Haven off the board for now. And that's the leading goal scorer right there. And Peter Ricciatelli. And you're gonna start to see New Haven get a little bit more riskier. Trying to fly a man out of the zone. Short-handed, even strength regardless. They need goals, they need them quick right now. That'll be Brandon Dixon. Minute and 20 left on the five minute power play. Benchwicks will eat at the blue line, go back behind the net. Trying to get out is Brandon Dixon. Bentrowicz walks the line, goes cross, has to play it in the skate, trying to go back into the high slot, off a of body, and out of harm's way for New Haven. Trying to find Jensen. Jensen, offensive zone ice. Looks off Dixon, finds a man on the far side, and shot wide by Signoretti, looking for his fourth. Thirty seconds left on the game misconduct five minute major to Aiden Dowsett. And again, Dowsett will not return this game. A game ejection on his five minute penalty. So he is done for the night. In front backhand try is stopped by Fernandez.
He heists it on the draw. Puck knocked away by Fernandez off the drop. Tick under 10 seconds left. And then we'll see how much longer we can go. Five on five as a shot goes on goal by Heisen again. So five on five we go. As the five minutes is finally up, Farmingdale did get one on there. It was Luciano Signoretti's hat trick goal. As that one changed direction and fighting it off was Fernandez. In front, firing, gloved away by Fernandez. So 14.01, or 14 minutes now exactly, left in the second period. Farmingdale continues to push the pace with their 4 0 lead now. And if you're New Haven, you like the way you started that period. Very fast, you were the aggressor, you were starting to throw the body a little more, and then you got a little too carried away, and one hit has now derailed any momentum they could have had at the start of the period with Dowsett's ejection. Romano shot, knocked down with a stick. And back the other way will be Ricciatelli. Ricciatelli will spin off, skids out, and now the Rams will push it back in the offensive zone ice. Cutting in, dragging, trying to go backhand is who else but Signoretti. Bouncing puck to no. First on it, negates the icing. Needs a hit from Romano, sheds off Romano. Trying to get it to the point, Signoretti intercepts, trying to bounce it off the boards. Now Signoretti taken down at center ice, no call coming. He gloved down by Mescari. Mescari gets around one, walks in. He'll go around the cage here, throw it on goal, bounce off a skate, friendly fire there, and it goes wide. Farmingdale still shows to be the, despite the, the first couple minutes of a push by New Haven, Farmingdale right back to the way they were in the first period. They continue to be the faster team, controlling the offensive zone, and New Haven having too many one and dones in the offensive zone. And, and what I mean by that, they carried in the zone, maybe get a shot, maybe not. And right if they're the carried in the zone, it's right back to Farmingdale and back up the other way. Need more sustained offensive zone time if they're going to mount a comeback here. They need four. Off a stick, knocked down with the glove hand of Lewis Saccone. As Malandrew Colo is off sides and then gets knocked down right after the whistle, but that one looked innocent. This New Haven team, we talked about Farmingdale ending the season winners of four and five. Four or five, New Haven's a team that ended the season winning six of seven. They had 4.4 goals a game, only allowing 2.85 against. And that 2.85 is a very good number, but it's even better considering in one of those games they allowed up seven. So, and that was the only loss they had in those seven games. Was a seven goal allowance against Quincy College. Fishing out from the boards, thrown towards the net, goes all the way around. As they'll be back in the center, it'll be Donald Romano, sending it right back to where New Haven started. And New Haven, they, they get stuck in this type of game. They're not gonna get much of anything. They need a push, and they need, like I mentioned before, consistent offensive zone time, and they're just not getting it. But speak of it, they cause a turnover in the offensive zone. From the goal line, cuts in backhand, pad save, big hit by Jensen. As it was Pilato who cut to the front but paid the price. Back the other way, McGarry leaves it just out of the reach, and maybe three on one for New Ave in the opposite direction. Richatelli with Deneau. Richatelli looks for Deneau, finds another man firing, pad save by Whalen, and the net comes off its moorings. Michael Pilato was the recipient of the pass that was meant for Deneau. 
but Pilato's shot was kicked away and then just went wide. Getting a hand pass here, yep. So who's there? I could not make out who the hand pass was on. I think it was against Farmingdale. So Puck will stay in the offensive zone and no line change for the Rams here. Richitelli will draw with Dixon, thrown on goal by Deneau. Goes all the way around the boards and out. Ventrowicz up the middle, no one home trying to find Dixon again. As Pilato will peel off, flip it into offensive zone ice, but it'll be gloved down by Kevin O'Hare. Ventrowicz, two black jerseys on him, gets a give and go pass from Jensen. Nick Ventrowicz, the defenseman, joined by McGarry, fires one, bounced off a leg, and goes far side. Coming off the boards, going down to a knee, trying to pass in front, firing away is Jensen. And trying to help out in front was Kevin Manzi, but he fanned on the shot. Manzi, pushes it behind the net. Coming out is Benchwick, still up with the forward group. He's gonna get back on defense, and now he's gotta really get back, because Pushing with numbers is New Haven. Pilato shot blocked down by Dixon and then takes down Pilato. Clean can be. That was a good stick there by Dixon to disrupt the shot. There's a shot drop in the high slot. Manzi trying to poke away out on the side of the cage. Gets his rebound, kicks out. And now again it's Dixon with a lot of space blocked down in front. Bouncing in the low slot. And New Haven cannot clear. Malandrucolo helping out with Manzi. Malandrucolo down to a knee. Couldn't get the shot off, got tied up in the slot. And pushing it out to safety is Matthew Bush. Bush trying to push through now. Hounded by two white jerseys, and no one back on defense. Could be a 2 on 0. It's Malandrucolo, and the puck got away from him. Alessandro, knocked off the puck by Patterson, but he'll come around the boards, met by Romano towards that, looking for a deflection. Could not find him as it's blocking away by Fernandez. It's all Farmingdale off the turnover, and it's knocked off the glove, I believe, of Fernandez. Might have got a piece of that. To the point, throw to the net by D'Alessandro again. This time it was Michael D'Alessandro. And outside of those two odd man rushes by New Haven, is powering to the net is signal ready. They poke away, jam for it. Fernandez clamping down on the post and keeps it out. But back to the point, D'Alessandro fires one into the glass. Sacone keeps it in. He's going to do it himself. Meets a hit on the boards, but gets it free. Cross ice pass coming off the bench is Riberick. And he'll scoop it back into offensive zone ice, and Farmingdale, as well as New Haven, will go for a change. Nobody there, because New Haven was going for a change. Intercepted pass by Cross, trying to get his way on goal. Goes behind the net. Signoretti couldn't tee it up, and now it's New Haven with numbers. Mascari, thrown in front off some bodies. Almost got to a lunging Fiola. That one bounces over the stick of Carroll. Heinsohn around the boards, by the net, stick down, and poking it free and trying to win a foot race is Fiola. Fiola with two white jerseys on him is stripped from behind. Good back check by both Rams there. You had Dixon and you had Colin Cross. Dixon going for the long pass. Fernandez fights it off and it goes behind him. So no icing here as Fernandez had to get a blocker on that one. 
to the point, walks the line, fires one off a stick, knocked down by Fernandez, and we'll get a whistle after a pretty decent amount of time went by without one. 6.06 left in the second period of this Empire Conference Black Division Championship game. Still 4-0 for Farmingdale State, and it's been all Farmingdale State so far. A kick there off the puck by Jensen goes right into the ceiling, so we'll get a whistle in, I believe it'll be neutral zone ice. It'll be Dixon, Brandon Dixon that is, and Richitelli on the draw. McGarry will scoop up, meets a body on the boards. Richitelli looks like he took a whack. Hey, Richard Telly is slow to get his stick back. Deneau, four checking behind the Farmingdale net is William Dixon will flip it all the way down for an icing. And Richard Telly is still feeling the effects. He took a stick up in the throat area. New Haven will switch up the forward group. On the dot will be James Brady. He wins it clean back to the high slot. Or should I, high, top, of, top of the circle, should I say. And it looks like another icing, but this one will be negated by Fernandez. Fanning on the clearing attempt. McGarry strips in front, trying to find Dixon. Bouncing off the body. Jensen in front. Goes to the point. Now Bentrowicz towards the net. Stick save. Rebound poking free. And Fernandez sprawls out to get the whistle. That was Matthew Bush that fanned on that clearing attempt, which... Led to McGarry and Dixon and Jensen poking away at that puck in the crease. And now it's a sprint. Chad Fiola first on it, first past it. In front, bouncing off a stick. Fiola trying to whack back at it in the high slot. Fiola still has it, fires, knocked down by Whalen. Now off a body, two on one the other way for Farmingdale State. In on goal, backhand shot, stopped by Fernandez. And right there, Gabriel Patterson tried to keep it in by sliding, but did more harm than good. Good play by Matthew Bush there on the back end to cut off that pass through the middle. It'll be Brendan Carroll. He'll just flip it into offensive ice and it'll be scooped up by Whalen. <laughs> New Haven, past couple shifts have been good in the offensive zone, able to gain the zone. There's a good individual effort by Chad Fiola to do it himself, but then you have a lot of this. A lot of miscues on the transition game, which has led to them getting trapped in their own end, as well as odd man rushes going the other way. William Dixon will play in his own end, go cross ice off the boards. Pilato has to... Played on the bounce, and that one goes out of play.
you've seen throughout the second period, as the first period, New Haven didn't have much going on. But the second period, you've seen pushes in spurts. They, they, they're going to need to find more consistency in these pushes to try to claw their way back into it right now. Because they got to try to get on the board here, and there's a stop by Whalen. Chitelli back out there after taking that stick up high. After the, uh, we had penalties galore at the end of the first period and the beginning of this period, and no stop there by Whalen. But after we had penalties galore at the end of the first and the beginning of this period with the two five minute penalties and game ejections, the refs have uh, swallowed the whistles here. Off the dot, firing again, and the third stop in a row made by Whalen. Second in a row coming off the faceoff. As Richard Telly, back to back faceoffs, has been able to get it to Pilato. Again, he gets it to Pilato, and another save. Four in a row for Whalen. Auto swoops past one. Puck comes out to the point, losing a stick as Jensen. Puck stays in though. Auto and a body on the far side. Puck comes out the center. It'll be William Dixon, the captain of the defensive group for Farmingdale. And again, so now the roles are reversed here. Farmingdale not able to exit their zone cleanly as they've just been throwing it to center. And it's becoming right back to them. And speak of it, it happens again. But now New Haven needs to be more aggressive in their forecheck to try to force, instead of Farmingdale defense just throwing at the center, force them to cough it up in their own end. Dixon, trying to spin off one and he does. He'll back it off the boards. And this is right now rinse and repeat, but if you're Farmingdale, you're up four nothing approaching the end of the second, you're, you'll take this. Puck pops up in the air, and then this is just w re repetition here. Farmingdale just gets the defense, goes D to D, throw it to center, and then the Ram uh, Rampo, excuse me, New Haven will intercept just like they're about to do, but they're not having any sort of systematic breakout. They're just throwing it right back in the offensive zone. And then just like this, up oh, underneath the stick to no, might have a step to the loose puck, backhand shot, did not get all that one, but he gets his own rebound, back in front, off a stick, all the way into the netting and out of play. 136 left in the second period, still 4-0 Farmingdale. Guys, let's see, this is a new line right now, it's not the Ricciatelli and Pilato face off here, but could not get the same result as Richitelli and Pilato got. Kept in by Patterson, the defenseman, stepping in behind the net. Sheds off one hit, trying to power through another. We have a penalty coming up on the play here. There was a chop. Let's try to, as it's going to be against New Haven. And now things might get chippy here right at the whistle. As D'Alessandro, D'Alessandro has to get separated at the whistle. So this was right before the penalty, so that was Patterson bodying through those hits. And then there it is, that chop right there by Matthew Labriola. So if Farmingdale hasn't already put their stamp on this game, a power play goal here would really drive home that narrative. To the point. One minute left in the second. Go around. 
the net for Farmingdale to the point Benchwicks. In the corner, Pace will go around the cage. Go from far side down to near. Pace. Back into the corner. It'll be scooped up by Cross. Cross try to find Heinsen. Heinsen will spin off at 30 left in the period. Ventrowicz, Heinsen. And they could be as passive and cautious as possible as they are up four here in the dying seconds of the period. 10 seconds left in the period. Benchwicks on the board, throws in front, pad save, rebound. Couldn't get a stick down on it, was Cross. Comes out to the point again, three seconds at two, deflected wide, and that will do it for the second period. So after two periods, it's Farmingdale State up 4 nothing over the University of New Haven in this Empire Conference Black Division Championship matchup. You're watching live on the LI Sports Network. We'll be right back with the third period puck drop.
Welcome back, everyone, to the rinks at Shelton, Connecticut. You're watching live on the LI Sports Network. My name is Jordan DeLuciano, and with 20 minutes left in the Empire Conference Black Division Championship, Farmingdale will start the period on the power play and up 4-0 over the University of New Haven. So this was a game that Farmingdale took immediately, scoring a quick one in the first, and they finished it off with three in the first period. Could add four, but it was a breakaway goal that was negated for an interference that happened behind the play. But then the fourth goal came. And they called an icing. I, if that's an icing, that's wrong because New Haven's on the penalty kill right now. So I don't know about that. But Luciano Signoretti got his hat trick goal in the second period, the fourth goal for Farmingdale. It came on a five minute power play when Aiden Dowsett was ejected from the game. It's a game that New Haven, Farmdale has been the better team, but New Haven has had their chances in terms of the special teams, but multiple times have negated their own power plays with their own penalties. But now Farmdale with eight seconds left on their man advantage. We'll set it up. It'll be Dixon down to his brother, Brandon. Brandon to the corner. Playing on a skate is Jensen. He'll go back up to the blue line. Five on five we go. Cross ice fast looking for Brentrowicz. Brentrowicz takes a hit, makes the play, goes behind the net. Bouncing puck goes to the point. William Dixon. Brentrowicz reaching stick, able to get that one free. Marulo going back towards Benchwick's Good pinch. Kept it in for the time being and keeps it in for now. Dixon fires one. Stopped by Fernandez. Marulo finds Jensen in front, trying to one-touch it into the net as Dixon hit it wide. All farming nail right now. Dixon back to his brother to the point. It'll be Dixon again. Through the legs. Nobody home in front as Pilato will skate it out to freedom for New Haven. Pilato trying to power his way into the offensive zone. But Dixon able to slow him down behind the net. That was the defenseman, William Dixon. The senior out of Bethpage, New York. No look pass in front and not able to get a good enough shot there was Colin Cross, but he got tangled up by two New Haven defenders. But back in comes Farmingdale. Rolano, the defenseman, in front and just missing a stick, and the net comes off its moorings. Reminder to all of our watchers and listeners out there, stay tuned right after this game on the LI Sports Network. It will be the Division Two, the Purple Division, Empire Conference Finals between the number four seed Ramapo College and the number two seed Fairfield University. Fairfield knocked off Quinnipiac yesterday, four to three in double overtime, and Ramapo with the big upset, knocking off Farmingdale State's Division Two team. They were the number one seed in the Empire as Rampo knocked them off 5-2 thanks to three straight goals in the third that took a 2-1 game into a 5-1 game. Big collision in the corner. Farmingdale trying to come out with it. Cross to the point. Lines, fires, knocked around and held, but momentarily, but then getting the whistle. Ref lost side of the puck, and once the ref loses side of the puck, you're going to hear that whistle. At the dot, pushed the point, not able to keep it in. It was Saccone. And Farmingdale will keep up playing this pitch and catch game. They'll just keep flipping it in, and the New Haven defense giving it back to them. We saw that on the other, uh, in the opposite terms of it, in the second period, in which the Farmingdale defense in their own zone were just flipping it to center and right back to the New Haven defense in neutral zone ice. And then the Chargers defense were just throwing it back to the Farmingdale defense, and opposed to trying to push the zone or create a breakout. It 
It's Sacone, the defenseman, walking in tough angled shot, is swallowed up by Fernandez. Most of these teams will be represented this coming March at the AAU National Championships. Farmingdale will be entering as the four seed in the, in the AAU American rankings. Talked about this in the beginning of the broadcast as New Haven will be walking in as the nine seed. Now, New Haven, you're going to have to see a little bit more here. Looks like they kind of just ran out of gas, but defense for Farmingdale doing a great job of keeping the puck at the blue line. There's a shot going wide by Dixon. Alessandro keeps it in, but puck got behind him. And it just looks like New Haven just running out of gas. Yes, they did have the later of the games yesterday, and the shot by Dixon again goes off a leg. So they had the later of the games. They pretty much... As that one goes into the netting. They pretty much finished pretty late yesterday, went to the hotel, and then before you know it, they're right back at it today in the championship game. There's a push there. As Mascari is taking exception to James Jensen. But then it, you have that aspect coming into it, and then you have the depth aspect as if you ever get a shot, take a look at the, the benches. The Farmingdale bench has a lot more white jerseys than New Haven has black jerseys. But speaking of New Haven, there's a shot on goal stopped by Whalen. As I believe the New Haven defense, there's only two lines of defensemen for New Haven. As Pilato shot was swallowed up by Whalen. If Farmingdale has the manpower on their bench, and it's proven to their benefit this game, as they were the fresher team from the jump, and due to the manpower being in their favor, they can continue to stay fresh. They're the quicker team to pucks. There's a Big collision at center ice, and that's going to be against Pilato for a low hit. And we saw that in the first period. So let's take a look at the replay first. Good strip from behind by Marulo. And it, yeah, there's, there's that low bridge hit. That's a dangerous hit there. And it's a two minute penalty on Pilato, but that's exactly the same hit we saw on McGarry when McGarry wound up. Afterwards, cross-checking him up high, it was due to the fact that Pilato really low-bridged him, and he does the same there. And a four-nothing game, the game, a five-nothing game potentially can really put this one in the books for Farmingdale. Deflected shot on cue, and they score. Roman Marulo, the power play goal, just 11 seconds into it, and now it's a 5-0 lead for the Rams. The penalties that have come back to bite New Haven. They got away with it yesterday as they were up 4-0 in the third, and they wound up taking their eight penalties in the third period. So they were able to have, have a breather because they were up four goals, but they're, you can't get away with it from the get-go. Pace, trying to go through the legs. Puck kicks out to the blue line as William Dixon will go chase it. Puck bouncing towards Fernandez, he'll play it on the stick. Looks like he's gonna do it himself, trying to help out his defense. But right there to intercept will be Colin Cross. Cross, up the wall. Heinsohn there for Farmingdale, trying to throw off a man, trying to kick it to the point, and he does. Heinsohn will just shovel it back towards the net, but it'll be gloved down by Bush. 
Now a breakaway pass. The man rolled by himself in Labriola, and he shot it wide. Nice move to evade two men there. In on goal, another nice move. Jamming away at the post. Nets off its moorings, though, if they're gonna let it go. As I speak of it, they blow it dead. That was Nicholas D'Alessandro with the, the shifty moves in the offensive zone. As Farmingdale looks like they're the ones that are down 5 nothing, playing with some urgency. And I think just New Haven just, uh, the way, there's not much left in the tank, you know? They don't have uh, enough manpower on the bench. As I mentioned, they only have two lines of defense. That one swallowed up by Fernandez. They don't have the legs on the bench. And again, I, I talked about the quick turnaround from winning last night and finishing off a third period that was a grueling third period. It wasn't just New Haven taking the penalties. It was Sacred Heart as well. So it went both ways. So they had a late finish, a grueling finish, and a quick turnaround today. But that's something they're going to have to get used to at the AAU National Championship coming up in April. Quick turnaround, playing sore, playing not at 100%. As Chargers throw it in front, looking for Richard Telly. As Puck pounces up in the air. And swoops to the far side corner, Deneau. Deneau throwing a high slot. Bouncing Puck and a free skate here for Farmingdale. Back the other way, two on one. Trying to slide and block it, and a great play by Pilato. And now thrown down, no penalty coming. As Pilato was thrown down by Malandrucolo. Crowd wanted a call, did not get one. Argu arguably, uh, they are right. They might have had a case. Yeah, that's a penalty. That, that should be a penalty. The first, he could have got two there. He could have got two, in my opinion. Interference and then holding. But winds up getting nothing. Kept in by Farmingdale, the defense is doing a great job this third period alone at keeping those pucks in at the blue line as Fernandez trying to get a blocker on it, got away from him. As things are getting a little bit more chippy here, a little bit more after the whistle stuff in terms of the, the verbal aspect. One cleanly by the Rams. Nice move by McGarry, and he fires one block it away. McGarry gets his own rebound. And it comes all the way down. Icing waved off as it hit a stick on the way down. That stick was William Dixon. Dixon, the brother, Brennan Dixon, fires when he missed wide. He's been awfully close to getting on the score sheet today in terms of the goal category. Jensen. Be sweeped back in by Bush. And McGarry waits for it and Multiple times this period, uh, Farmingdale has been able to kind of catch New Haven sleeping on the defense, catch them changing, and potentially push an odd man rush the other way. This is a game right now that Farmingdale will happily accept as New Haven not really doing much to push the pace here. As I speak of it, they push it the other way with Fiola. Fiola had a very strong second period, including one shift, in which he kind of did it himself. He entered the zone, took some hits, 
Got his own rebound, got his own rebound a second time. But now it's the Rams in front, trying to knock one loose and taking the net off and going down. There's a man in front trying to get out the number who that was. Check the replay. It was Signoretti on the pass. He's got a hat trick today. Let's see, who's the man going to the net here? It was Riberick. Ten minutes left to go in this one. Farmingdale well on their way, barring a five-goal outburst by New Haven this game. Farmingdale on their way to capturing the first ever Empire Conference Black Division Championship. Nice move at the blue line, shiftiness, and then meets a big body on the second attempt, but draws a pen penalty. That was Michael Polito made a great move at the blue line, but then drew the penalty on the second one. So there's that nice move there, nice skip. And then, yeah, you have the hands up. Yeah, that's gonna, that'll do it. Yeah, once you lunge forward and then your hands extend, you're gonna get called nine times out of 10. So a chance for New Haven to get on the board here. Their past power plays have been all negated by penalties of their own. So they really haven't had the chance to have a complete power play here. And they'll start off going to retrieve the puck in their own end as Farmingdale gets a quick clear. Farmingdale penalty at 10-24. Richard Telly will fire one muscled away by Whalen. So it will be Donald Romano, the sophomore out of Franklin Square, New York. He'll be sitting for two right now. That two minutes is now a minute and a half left. So 30 seconds old. As will be Deneau. Kristen Deneau, nice move to get around one. Walks in the zone. It looks like he's going to fire it. Couldn't get the shot off. His bench has got a stick in there. But it comes out to the point to Mascari. Mascari trying to get it back in. Intercepted by Farmer now, now all by himself. I believe that's Bentrowicz. Yes, it is the defenseman, Nick Bentrowicz. As he's eaten on the boards, taking on three chargers right now. Nick Bentrowicz digging away at this puck, chewing up this penalty. And he's still going. And he causes the puck to come all the way back to his defensive group. What a shift there by Nick Bentrowicz. The sophomore of Islip Terrace, New York, mentioned during the lineups that he got a brief stint this year with the Division II Farmingdale team, where well, that Division II team had a lot of injuries to their back end. 30 seconds left on the man advantage. Trying to push it forward, and they do efficiently. Farmingdale back the other way. It'll be a man in Riberick, and he'll do just like what Bentrowix did, peel off and send it back to the defense. Three seconds and two, that would do it for the power play. Not anything happening for the Chargers on that man advantage. As the clock is slowly ticking, ticking away, it's getting late early right now for New Haven. Trying to go end to end and push it is Gabriel Patterson. Patterson taken down. Let's see what we get here. Because Patterson got tangled up. Who's going to get who here? It's a hold. Is it on Patterson or is it on Farmingdale? Couldn't make out who the Farmingdale back checker was. So here's Patterson coming through the neutral zone. It's going to be this guy back checking. So that most likely looks like it's going to be Heisen for Farmingdale. Yeah, Matthew Heisen will go to the box now. So back-to-back -back penalties, back-to-back -back power plays for the Chargers. With 7.14 left in this one. And they needed to look 
anything better than what it looked like previously. Bouncing free in front. Looks like it hit a leg, now in the low slot. A foot race with Deneau. Deneau couldn't get the puck, but the puck went out to the point. So he did the job. Walking and firing, blocker save, Whelan. So yes, it'll be Heisen for holding, a minute and a half left from the man advantage. As Mascari will walk in. Mascari avoids a hit. Down the boards, in front, looking for a stick, and it's shoveled wide. To the point, it'll be Bush. We'll go around the net, trying to scoop it up. There's Malandrucolo. Malandrucolo will just eat it on the board, so now be helped out by Kevin O'Hare. Malandrucolo still pushing forward, and it comes out of the zone. Winds and fires, blocked down by two white jerseys, spins and fires, and gets it out of the zone with just under 50 left in the power play, and New Haven is offsides. Farmingdale State College, this team led by former Farmingdale State College forward and a Farmingdale State College alumni, Albert Markopoulos, in his first season at the helm. Won the Empire Conference Black Division Coach of the Year Award. And is six minutes away from capturing the first ever Empire Conference Black Division Championship. Albert Markopoulos' brother, Spiros Markopoulos, and again, another former forward and alumni here at Farmingdale State as an assistant coach with a Division II team that was knocked out yesterday against Ramapo. Fifteen left on the man advantage. Couple men go down in the corner. Three seconds left in the power play, and that will do it as the Rams get a clear all the way down to Fernandez. So right now, if you're either team, you can't really see a five-goal comeback right now as a collision right at the red line. I'm not seeing any penalties right now. Yep, nothing called. Back the other way comes Farmingdale. It's Signoretti's shot goes off the leg of Fernandez. Signoretti, got it poked away by Patterson. And then stripped to the blue line, and back in comes Farmingdale, knocked away at the last second. So going to chase it will be Marullo, and it goes in front and covered by Fernandez. So right now, you see the little thing is starting to heat up a little bit. The game's 5-0. Pretty much understood on both ends that this game is all but done with 4.32 left. You just don't want to do anything that's going to require any more discipline off the ice in terms of suspensions down the line because these both these teams want to be fresh and ready for the AAU National Championship is the shot off a shoulder, off the bar, and out of play. At the dot, again thrown towards the net end. Back-to-back -back stops for Fernandez off the draw. Eerily similar to what we saw in this same exact position with New Haven. And then Jensen getting a little bit involved with Mascari and Brady. A little bit of false starts. Each winger's got to stay in their own spot. As McGarry will let that one go to the point. Thrown on goal and snagged again by Fernandez. Three straight faceoffs in the same spot. 
Two of them won by Farmingdale. Jensen will battle behind the net for it. He'll go around the boards. And over the stick, D'Alessandro. And he'll have to go get it in his own end. Poked out the neutral zone ice. Farmingdale trying to get around a man here, and they can with McGarry. McGarry in on goal, goes in front, backhand stuff. Getting the pad down is Fernandez, and it kicks out behind. Now Forsyth will go with Bush. Kept in by D'Alessandro. McGarry having a stick battle behind the net right now with Mascari. D'Alessandro again will throw it back to these two. But instead it's going to be Jensen knocking Bush off the puck. McGarry. Well, he's behind the net. He'll be picked up by Brandon Dixon. Dixon looks for Jensen, finds him, trying to stuff it on the backhand, and it was stopped by Fernandez. Big collision, Dixon now slashing with Mascari. So let's see what we got here. Jensen and Mascari were both whacking at each other. I right, let's see, they're probably gonna get both of them, it's just a matter if they're going to the box or they're going to the locker room. So Jensen will go to the locker room, and so will Mascari. to go in this one. Jensen and Mascari's days are over as they got into a stick battle right behind then it went in front of the net. It'll be Patterson. Patterson crossed the middle. Shot disrupted, steered away by Whalen. Buck goes all the way up and just missing the netting, so we'll truck on through here. It'll be picked up behind the net by Malin Drucolo, but he coughs it up, goes right up the boards, as we're just trying to get to the final two and a half minutes here without any more discipline, but now it'll be Richard Telly firing one, and he scores! Peter Richard Telly gets New Haven on the board. It's now five to one, Farmingdale. So the shutout comes to an end for Brandon Whalen with 2.23 left in the game. So something to salvage here for New Haven. They get the goal from their leading goal scorer in Peter Ricciatelli. Puck looks to be stuck in some equipment there. And I think we're going to get a penalty coming up. Looks like there was a cross check. Let's see what we got here. I thought I saw a cross check on New Haven. Yeah, I think it's going to be against New Haven. And this was kind of what happened yesterday when New Haven was soundly beating Sacred Heart. The penalty started happening. That's exactly what we're getting now. As now they have two chargers in the box right now. One by... Farmingdale now be a five on three pretty much to finish the game. Game clock and penalty clock are separated by I believe five seconds. Yeah. 
To the point, a lot of open ice to try to get this goal back. Fan on the shot by Dixon. As Dixon sick goes flying, getting a whole lot of that was Macri. So Deneau gets the assist on Ricciatelli's goal. Ricciatelli was held off the goal sheet yesterday, but gets on today. This is a shot on goal. Knocked down by Fernandez and cleared. And like I said before, if you're both teams, you're just trying to get to the finish line here. Dixon walks in, will get back to her, finds a man, and missing wide. It'll be Marullo, walks in, cross ice again, winds, fires, blocked down, gets his own rebound again, and a stop by Fernandez. Got 49 left in the game, 43 left on the five on three. As New Haven will win this draw, go all the way down. So Farmingdale State on their way to winning the Empire Conference Black Division title. Division two team that got knocked out yesterday, they are eight time champions of the Empire Conference. So this will be the first time the Division three team Wins a conference title as that one's deflected wide. So Farmingdale State will continue this momentum and push it into Philadelphia at the AAU National Championship coming up in March. As we have 15 seconds left, Fernandez sticks that one aside. First year head coach Albert Markopoulos will win his first Empire Conference title as a Coach, he's won many as a forward, as now we're going to have some shoving at the whistle here with 0.9 seconds left in the game. So all we have to do is just get the whistle, and we'll be over with it. But Farmingdale players already have one feet. Some have two feet over the bench already. Let's see if we even do the face-off here. We might just call it. We just need a face-off with 0.9 left. So Farmingdale State College will be the champions of the Empire Conference Black Division. And that will do it. Head coach Albert Markopoulos, like I said, won many as a forward. As an alumni here at Farmingdale State, wins his first as head coach. The lone senior on the team, Captain William Dixon on the back end. Will win his first conference title as well. Brandon Whalen, very solid in net. The junior out of Smithtown, New York. As Farmingdale was the number one seed at the end of the regular season in the Empire Conference Black Division. And they wind up being the number one team in the conference playoffs, knocking off New Haven 5-1. For New Haven, a very good season. 10-6-1 during the regular season. A very good showing yesterday, knocking off Sacred Heart 4-0. They won the season series against Farmingdale, but came up short in the all-important championship game. But we'll see more New Haven at the AAU National Championship. So once again, everyone, stay tuned for tonight's action. where it will be the Empire Conference Purple Division, the Division II championship matchup here in the Empire, the number two ranked team in the Empire, Fairfield University going up against the number four ranked team in the Empire in Ramapo College. We'd like to thank you all for joining the LI Sports Network. Once again, your final Farmingdale State College 5, University of New Haven 1. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you all soon.